All right, guys, so I'm going to try and do lesson seven more on video because you have all the tools that you need to solve hands-on equations, equations without pieces. Um, here's a perfect example of an equation you would have seen. Instead of using pieces, we know exactly what pieces we would have put on our balance, so we're just going to draw them instead. First step that you need to do is find that equal sign, draw a line down so you can keep both sides of the, our balance equal. And what we need to remember is this equation here is the original physical setup. This is what we're going to go back and check with at the end, so we don't want to touch it at all. Right underneath it, I'm going to draw exactly what I would have put on the balance. For the X-Men, you can either draw little triangles that look like that, or you can draw X's. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to do a couple of examples of each. So um, I'm going to start with the triangle. So I would have four X-Men, so we have one, two, three, four, plus we would have the number cube of a three. So I'm literally drawing exactly what would have been on our balance. On the other side, I have three X-Men, one, two, and three, color those in a little bit darker, and a nine. So if you take a look, this is what we would have put on our balance. I'm going to drag this table a little bit closer. Sorry about that. Um, so you can see it a little bit better. So at this point, we have our setup. And we are going to start with our X-Men battles. Now, we're not going to actually take the pawns off the board. We're just going to pretend we did that. So I like to circle them to show that they are in the X-Men battle. So this X-Man over here is going to take out this X-Man over here. And this X-Man over here is going to take out this X-Man over here. And this X-Man over here is going to take out this X-Man over here. At this point, I'm done doing my X-Men battles. But I like to hit the reset button. I like to see, okay, after I do my X-Men battles, what am I left with on my board? Well, on this side, all I'm left with is one X-Man and the number three. And on this side, all three of those X-Men are gone, so all I have over here is the nine. At this point, I can use my mathematical brain to figure out what that X-Man must be equal to, but I want to show you how to do the number value battles. I would take our two number value battles, or two number values, they would battle, the three would disappear completely, so I just cross it off, and the nine would be knocked down by three, so the nine would become a six. And at this point, again, I can hit that reset button. What would I have left on each side? On this side, I have one X-Man. That's all I have. And on this side, I have a six. And at this point, as Captain Obvious, X must be equal to six. So I've solved it at this point. But of course, we want to check to make sure our answer is correct. We want to go back into that original physical setup to check the original equation. On your paper, it would be the equation that's written on your paper. Anywhere I see an X, I'm going to put the number six. So I, and I'm going to put it in parentheses just so I can see it. So here's an X, so I'm going to put a 6 there because that's what I think it is. And here's an X, so I'm going to put a 6 there because that's what I think that is. Now I'm going to go ahead and figure out the value of each side. This 4X now really means 4 sixes, or 4 times 6. So if I kind of think about what the value of just that piece is, 4 sixes, or 4 times 6 is worth 24, plus 3 more, and that gives me a total of 27 on the left. On this side, my 3x, since x is now 6, I think, 3 sixes, or 3 times 6 is 18, and 18 plus 9 more, that's 27. And so my check would work out perfectly, 27 equals 27. So we're simply doing paper pencil what we would have done with our pieces. Let's go over here. I'm actually going to physically drag my computer because I don't know how else to do this. Try and line you up here. And here we have a perfect example. I can do this. Come on, Mrs. Phillips. Uh, there we go. Here I have a perfect example of something you might have seen in the subtraction lesson. So same idea. We're going to draw our balance. And um, this time I'll use X's to represent X-Men. So I have three X-Men. So I'm simply going to draw three X's on my balance. And then I don't know if you can see it, but it says minus an X. We don't want to circle it because circling shows X-Men battles. So to minus it, I'm simply going to scribble it out, like darkly scribble it out. I don't want to erase it. I just want to show I subtracted it. And then I'm going to add a 4. So I have a 4 number value over here. On the other side, I just have 5 X-Men and a number value of 1. It doesn't really fit, so we'll kind of stick it over there. I realize you are not seeing this nearly as closely as I would like you to. How does that look? I think that's a little bit better. Okay, so now we have our setup. 
and um, we had three X and we took away one and a four, and now we have five X and a one. Now we're gonna do our X-Men battle. So this guy is gonna take out this guy, this guy is gonna take out this guy, and that's all that I can do. So now I'm gonna hit the reset button. On this side, all I have is a four. On this side, I have three X-Men left and the number one. Now, I might be able to get this without doing my number value battles, but the number value battles are super helpful. I can take away one off each side. This one disappears completely. This four knocks down by one and becomes a three. So if I hit the reset button, I have three on this side and I have three X-Men on this side. Now, it's not as Captain Obvious, but it's pretty clear each of those X-Men have to be one because one plus one plus one is three. So I believe that's the answer. I'm now gonna go back to the original physical setup to check. Anywhere I see the letter X, I'm gonna put a one. So there's an X here, there's an X here, and there's an X here. So I always go to the easier side first. This side's got subtraction in it, that's a little bit harder. I'm gonna go over here. This says five X's, or in this case, five ones, or five times one, that would all be worth, uh, how would five times one be worth six, Mrs. Phillips? Five times one is five, plus one more would be a total of six. Now on the other side, I'm hoping if I'm right, it equals six. So let's try this. I know three ones would be worth three. So three minus one, that's two, and plus four more, two plus four is six. So six is equal to six, okay? We are gonna do one more. This time I gotta bring you way over here. Try and get it lined up. Where is it, Mrs. Phillips? Is it behind? Oh, see, look, there it is right there. Okay, now you can see that this is, um, the last one I'm gonna do, it's the hardest one because it has those parentheses, but honestly, it's really not that bad. I'm gonna find that equal sign and I'm gonna draw my balance right down the equal sign there. And is it better if I stand over here? Sure. Okay. So on this side, I know anywhere I see parentheses, it's like a package. So coming down from the sky in each package is an X-Man and a four. But I know that this two means that I have two of these packages. So I'm simply gonna draw what that says. So each package has an X and a four. But I have two of these packages, so right on top of it, I'm gonna put another X and a four. But then you'll notice on the same side, I still have one more X, okay? That's literally what that says. I have two packages, each of them has an X and a four, plus I have another X. And then on the other side, I simply have an X and a 16. And what's really nice about doing a paper pencil is I didn't have to do a 10 and a six. I could just write 16. So um, I like to kind of refresh and unwrap my packages. On this side, all together, I have three X's, one, two, three. I'm gonna put them together, one, two, three. And then I have two fours, which I can trade that in for just a number eight. It just kind of simplifies it a little bit. On this side, there's really no simplifying I can do. Um, I think I came up with a problem that we're gonna like here. All right, so now this is kind of the problem I have, and you know what to do from here. We're gonna start with our X-Men battles. That guy is gonna take out that guy. So we are left with two X's and an eight on this side. And all we have left on this side is a 16, which makes it even simpler. I can take the same number off of each side. I'm gonna take eight off of each side. That leaves nothing over here, but it leaves me with just eight over here. So if I hit that refresh button, I have two X's over here and an eight over here. And I do know that four plus four makes eight. So each of my X-Men must be worth a value of four. Now, going back to check, we have to make sure we're going back into the original physical setup. This is not as hard as it looks. Anywhere I see an X, I'm gonna put a four. So this X is worth four, this X is worth four, and this X is worth four. Now I'm gonna do the easier side first. That's this side, because there's no parentheses. 4 plus 16 is 20. So I would be correct if I can prove that this side is also equal to 20. Well, just like PEMDAS, we start with parentheses. If this X is 4, 4 plus 4 is 8. So I know that every package is worth 8. But I don't only have one package, I have two packages. So two packages of 8 is 16, plus 4 more is 20. So 
hopefully that was enough to um, understand lesson seven a little bit. If not, you have the video that you can look back at. But by this point, I'm probably done with my other small group and I can help you individually. So try the first one on classwork sheet lesson seven. You're going to need scrap paper. Um, make sure you do the check correctly. There's no reason to get these wrong. Do the check. Put that, whatever you find for x, back into that original equation and make sure that the two sides are equal. If they're not, you made a mistake somewhere and it's easy to go back and try again. Okay? Great job. Good luck.